Hi guys, welcome to the pattern making class. Today we're going to work from home. So welcome to my home office. I've set it up over the last few days and yesterday I've um, prepared the drafting videos. So I have filmed it from the top so you can see me working on the paper and I've done a voiceover to explain every step and I've also added some um, numbers and written instructions in the video. Unfortunately, my hand-drawn lines were a little bit light, so I've kind of like made them a bit stronger after. The drafting is divided into two parts. We have a body part and we have a sleeve part. And actually, this is pretty similar to what I'm wearing right now, because we're doing a um, t-shirt block with a long sleeve. And what does that mean? It means it's for knitted fabrics, it's for jerseys, it is for very elastic material. We don't have darts, it's a completely flat pattern and it's actually also um, an identical pattern. So the front and the back are the same except for the neckline and the sleeve is actually just mirrored in the middle. So it's also symmetrical. I hope you enjoy. If you have questions, you can um, write me or you can leave comments below. And this is now part of the little black dress project. It's the second part of the semester. It's all dedicated to jerseys and we're working towards a little dress. So this t-shirt block gives us um, a very good base pattern. We can make it longer, we can make it shorter and we can play around with it. So let's do that and happy drafting. Today we will need a curved ruler, a straight ruler and a pencil. The rest is optional. So, there we go. First things first, we need a straight vertical line, um, a little bit towards the left because we are drafting towards the right side. I'm marking on the top and the lower um, edge of my paper the same distance. I think it was like, I don't know, 30 cm or something. Now I have this very long ruler, but it's very old, kind of hard to use. The line is a little bit unsteady with it too, but it's the longest one I have at home. So now we will mark a point on the top part of this line and we're going to call it zero. And from zero we are also going to square out to the right. Zero. So the next one is zero to one and that is the neck to waist measurement 41 centimeters in our case and also we're going to square out to the right from this point which is number one this line now is also the waistline so The next step is going to be our finished length, which means the overall length. In the pattern it's described as 0 to 2. Um, I'm a bit lazy, so actually I'm just measuring it from the waistline. We always like know that from waist to hip it's around 20, so I'm adding 25, so it's a little bit over the hip. So actually I'm measuring 1 to 2, which is 25 centimeters. And that gives us the finished length. Now I've marked both lines as um, waist and then also the hem basically. The finished length is, an op is optional so it's free to design and we can make it crop or we can make it over long or we can make it just something in between. So now like I mentioned before, in this pattern I'm going to use the 
is in the last bracket. So always like the biggest one, 4.5. So this is now um, 0 to 3. And for this one, we need the arm sky depth. And we're going to add 4.5 centimeter ease, which actually also gives us a larger armhole as compared to the regular um, fit, which just has like one cm ease. So this is this gives us 25.5 centimeters, and we're also going to square that out to the right. And this is the arm sky depth. Also kind of like how deep the armhole is. So the next one is 0 to 4. That is um, half the measurement 0 to 3. And we're going to square out from that point as well. 12.75 0 to 4. Quick check on the diagram, always a good idea. So this one is square out to the right. And then the next one, 0 to 5, is a quarter of 0 to 4. That is kind of like 3.2. And then we're going to square that out to the right as well. Now, 0 to 6, we are not um, working on the vertical line anymore. Now we're moving um, from 0 to the right. And that is one fifth of the next size plus. 1 cm for the east and that gives us 8.4 centimeters so 0 to 6 we measure to the right gives us 8.4 so from this point we will go up one centimeter we will draw a short line and this will be number seven now once we have um, drawn number seven, we can draw the back of the neck curve from zero to seven. So I'm marking it. Seven and then the curve. Now, as some of you might have noticed, I'm using two different curves. They're actually very similar. The one um, with the red print is a, a French curve and it also has like a very nice ruler. That's why I use it mainly. The um, curved part is actually exactly the same as the Thai style one that looks like a parrot. And I'm using it from the flat towards the round area. The next measurement is 3 to 8 and this is on the arm sky level and we are using half the back width measurement and again with the biggest ease 3.5 centimeters and that gives us 20.7. From this point we square up a straight line and we get 9 and 10, respectively. So, from 10 we draw a next point, 1.5 centimeters, and that is 11 to the right. And then we can join 7 and 11, <laughs> and that is the shoulder seam.
Now we are going to take care of our width, means the bust measurement. And again, we are marking on the arm sky level, and this time it is 3 to point number 12. We are using the quarter of the bust measurement, which is 88 divided by 4, makes 22, and we're adding 4.5 centimeter ease which gives us point number 12 at 26.5. Now we can also square down, which leads to point number 13 and our side seam as well. Quick check on the diagram because now it is time for the arm sky. I also forgot to mark the points, so I'm doing that real quick. So, the arm sky, um, we are going to use our curve for that. I'm trying to kind of get an idea. Let's go for the French, and the round part goes down and it's going to be less of a curve upwards. So I'm just trying to fit it in there, touching points 11, 9 and 12, and it's a perfect fit, it always is. And exactly this area of the curve is exactly like this one. Quick comparison, so don't worry, whichever ruler you have at home, does the trick. So the back draft is actually finished now and the only thing that we have to do is to add the front neckline. So I'm marking one-fifth of the neck size minus 0 0.5 centimeters which gives us 6.9 and I'm marking that downwards from point 0. Now I can use my curved ruler with curved side down. Actually I'm using the type parrot ruler now because the French one wouldn't fit. I have an old bed in front of me. So the curvy side down and a quick neckline. I also marked uh, a very short horizontal line at point 14 so I avoid v-neck situations. The drafting part is over now, but this pattern is basically a two-in-one. The back and the front are identical, only differ in the neckline. So I have to trace them um, as separate blocks now. I'm going to use the pink felt tip marker for the front and then I have an orange one for the back. I'm including the waistline because I'm also going to use that as a notch for the side seam. Always use the curve ruler for tracing the curves. It makes them much cleaner and it's way quicker actually. I trace everything with the ruler because I need it to be super clean. Since I don't have um, cardboard at home, just from moving boxes, but that's way too rough, 
No, but I don't have uh, the good hard, hard paper for blocks at home, so I'm actually going to turn this into a pattern piece directly. I'm gonna label it like a block though. So this is the easy fitting t-shirt block. And actually we were drafting a size M. Quick check, is it really size M? Yes, size M. And this is the front. This is a, um, a block for knit or stretch materials and therefore I'm not really giving it a grain line. I mean, quite frankly, obviously the vertical would probably be the grain line, but that can also change sometimes. So the center front is also where I'm going to fold, unfold my pattern. It'll be cut on fold. It has to be mirrored on the center front. Now I'm also drafting the back. I could have drafted it the other way around, which would have probably been a little bit more convenient in the traditional way, but my master plan is stuck to the floor with tape because the AC is blowing pretty hard. I've sped the video up a little bit, quite obviously, because tracing takes a little bit of time. Again, also the waistline and the arm sky level, because I want the waistline to be my notch. Also marking the three dots, center back, center front, like I mentioned, because this is where the pattern unfolds. And I also write easy fitting t-shirt block, size M, this time it's the back and I'm using orange for that. Now we are ready to draft the sleeve. What you guys haven't seen is me adding seam allowance to the body patterns. I added 0.6 centimeters, which is um, equal to my overlocking machine stitch. Now, the first step again is a vertical line. This time a little bit more centered on the paper. Um, slightly to the left in my case. And then we are marking number 15 on the top part of this line. Leave a bit of a distance from the edge of the paper, maybe five centimeters. And this is our first point, which is also the top center point of the sleeve. Now, the next step is 15, this top point down to 16, which is half the measurement of 0 to 3. This measurement is from the main body pattern. And quick check, 12.75, and we're adding one centimeter for ease. Now, I'm putting the next measurement, 15 to 17. I'm using my old long ruler because this is 60 centimeters. It's the jersey sleeve length plus, in our case, 5 cm. That makes it almost 60, so I've rounded it up to 60. The two new points both need to be squared out to the left. So that is 16 and 17. And only to the left. Make sure it's on a 90 degree angle. Now, the line that is on the point number 16 is where we are going to place point 18. Um, in order to get the precise measurement, we have to measure the arm sky there, but we're not measuring the curve, we're measuring a, 
straight line from point 11 to point 12, which gives us now the measurement that we need to find point 18 on the line from point 16. We are pivoting our ruler. The measurement is 25 centimeters and that includes 2 cm for ease. This gives us now a very nice helpline to create the sleeve head afterwards. Now, the next step is to square down from point 18 until we hit the line coming from point 17, which is also the cuff of our sleeve. In order to do that, I am quickly measuring the distance 16 to 18. I'm transferring it to the line from point 17 and then I'm connecting these two points by using my two rulers because the wooden one is not very straight. So this was point 19 by the way. Now we're going back to the head of the sleeve. Um, I'm marking the first third between 18 and 15 as point number 20. This will also be the front and back pitch point for this very simple sleeve. Once I've marked number 20, I can draw the curve. The first, the shorter bit, will curve down by 0.6 cm and the larger bit will curve up by around 1.75 cm. Um, I will also make a little horizontal line at the top point number 15 so I don't have a pointy sleeve but rather a round one. So I've marked the measurements there and now I'm using the curved ruler, the tie version this time, oops there he is, not behind but next to me and I'm using the very curvy part now for the first short one with the curve facing to the left and then I'm gonna flip it curve facing to the right and I basically connect where I stopped. Now I'm marking the little top part there so I end up horizontally. Take your time for the curves. The better the curve, the nicer the sleeve. This draft is almost finished. Now I just want to make the cuff a little bit narrower and I will mark the first third of the line 19 to 17 and I name this point 21 and I will now connect 21 to our point 18 in a straight line and that is pretty much it for the drafting part. So I've sped the second part of the video a little bit up. Now I will um, highlight my lines a little bit with a pink marker because I want to trace them. And I'm doing that with the curves as well using my ruler. And then I will also add seam allowance. Um, for some reason my camera, my iPhone actually didn't film the part where I did that to the bodies block and I really couldn't do it afterwards again so I'm showing it on the sleeve. I'm adding 1 cm for the cuff, 0 0.6 on the sides and also on the sleeve head. 0 0.6 centimeters because this is the width of my overlock seam. We can um, stitch a t-shirt together with an overlocker especially if it has a differential feet. We can also use our home machines, especially with a elastic triple stitch and um, with um, various like overlock stitches that the home machines offer. 
Jersey needles are always a good idea. They don't cut but punch. So now we come to the mirroring part. I've actually taped it exactly at the central axis, which is my line square down from 15. And since our tracing paper is very thin, I can now easily trace it through. And I'm using an orange marker now, which I have also done for the body part. The front is pink and the back is orange. And I'm doing that with the sleeve as well, because one side um, matches to the front and one matches to the back. And that could be interesting if I want to create um, rack line sleeves afterwards, something like that. I'm also tracing the seam allowance and now I'm actually going to cut the sleeve out. I um, don't have cardboard at home, so I'm directly cutting now my paper pattern pieces. They are not very interesting yet because it's just the block pattern, but I will stitch them up. So I'm cutting the piece out. Um, I'm doing this because I also want to transfer this point 20, which is right there. I want to transfer that to my body's patterns, to the body section. I have already done that. But the video didn't really happen, so there we go. But I'm showing you how to match it. We are just actually over layering our pattern pieces and the curve corresponds very well because we use the ruler. And then I'm notching these areas. I actually also use the waistline on the body pattern as a notch. And I'm now transferring this notch also to the other side, but I'm marking it with two lines because this is the back pitch point. See, quick check, it's all there. And I'm basically ready to cut this from Jersey. There you go, there's the front, there is the back part. 